At the end of the last video, I gave you two exercises that uh, demonstrate validity and entailment with truth trees. So we're going to go over the solutions now. And as always, thanks everyone for supporting the channel. If you can financially, the join button is below for two or five Canadian a month just to support the channel. Or you can like, share, comment, subscribe, all the YouTube stuff. I appreciate it all. Anyways, let's get into it. Let's turn our lines on to get things ready. First, we need to show that A and B are C. A if and only if C, then not C not C then D, and not D entails P and Q. So I've set up the first four lines, and now we need to show it entails P and Q. So what we do with entailment is we take the negation of the thing we want to entail, and then we find a contradiction. What you'll notice in this question is that P and Q has nothing to do with the rest of the things that we have to start with. A and B or C, A, C, not C, D, not D, entailing P and Q, there must be some disaster going on here. Okay, so how do we start? Well, let's do and decomposition first just to get it out of the way because that way we don't have to take branching paths. So if A and B or C is true, then that means that A is true and B or C is true. So this comes from one and this is and decomposition. Doesn't look like we're going to get much uh, to do without starting to have to actually branch paths at this point. Now, I'm not going to do with uh, do not P and Q ever, because it's never going to help. But, hmm, where to start now? Well, let's do not C arrow D. Let's just do this one, because I already have a not D here as an atomic sentence. Well, as an atomic with one negation. And I have a D there, so this will hopefully close a branch at least. So, not C arrow D, either the antecedent is false, so we'll have not not C in one case, or the consequent is true, so we'll have D. This will be line 8, this comes from 3, and this is arrow decomposition. I'm just going to do line 9 right away for C to get rid of double negation there, so that comes from 8, and that's DN. At this point, we can close D, because we have the D and not D, so that's a contradiction, that D branch is now done. Okay, I have C. So maybe we can do something to get rid of C. Well, I see <laughs> the second line, A if and only if C, then not C. So this will be another arrow decomposition case. So we'll have to come up with two branching paths, either A if and only if C, and we take the negation of that, either that's true, or the consequent not C is true. So that's 10, uh, that comes from line two, and this is arrow decomposition. Now, this right side not C is going to close because we have C and we have not C. Okay, at this point, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do the negation of A if and only if C. Again, that's the only thing really left to do. We could do not P and Q, but that doesn't do anything for us because we don't have P's and Q's in our tree. At this point, uh, not A if and only if C is really our last hope at finding any sort of closure. So let's do this in blue. We're going to take care of this one. So this just means A and C have to be different values. So in one case, we're going to have not A and C. And in the other case, we're going to have A and not C. So both of these come from line 10. And this is not if and only if decomposition or not by conditional decomposition. Now, the left side closes because we have not A and A, which is beautiful. We can close that. And the right side here will close because we have C and not C. So because all of our branches have now closed, we have proven entailment. We've shown that A and B are C, A if and only if C, then not C, not C, then D, and not D entails P and Q. So if you're ever given something absurd like this, where the variables or propositions just don't even show up in the antecedent there at the left side of the entailment, then you're probably definitely going to find a contradiction. So that's the first question. Hopefully that wasn't too bad. Really, the difficulty with these problems is setting it up and then just applying the rules as you did before. So we'll do one more. P if and only if Q, P or R, and S and not Q entails not P. So remember, I've written out our three assumptions here, and we have to say entails not P. So we take the negation of that not not p. That's our fourth assumption. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take not not p 
and I'm going to reduce it to P using double negation on four. Since two knots, uh, we can't really do anything with that. Just get rid of them. Okay, I'm going to now deal with and decomposition, just so that way we don't have to do branching paths. So coming from three, if S and not Q is true, then S is going to be true and not Q is going to be true. So that's line three. And that's and decomposition. So at this point, we can do P or R, or we can do P if and only if Q. I'm going to do P if and only if Q, because I have a P here and I have a Q here. I don't really have an R anywhere, so branching that out might not help too much. So let's do P if and only if Q and see if anything nice happens. So this is going to give us branching paths. We say P if and only if Q, this means that P and Q have to have the same value. So there's going to be one case where we have P and Q, and there's going to be another case where we have not P and not Q, since those are the two ways that these can have the same value. So this is both the biconditional decomposition from line one. Now on the left side, we have Q and we have not Q. So that is going to close because we have a contradiction. The right side is going to close as well because we have P and we have not P. So actually, that's the end of it. We have proven entailment, so the proof is complete. P if and only if Q, P or R, and S and not Q entails not P. So that's how you do validity. Hopefully by now, you're able to set up everything, inconsistency, tautologies, contradictions, entailment or validity, and then do truth tree to determine whether or not those things are true or not. So if you have any questions, as always, you can leave some comments down below. But before the video is done, I actually want to talk about developing some intuition here. So let's go to a new page and think about this. I don't want to think about this in truth trees because we're about to enter a series of videos on rules of inference. So let's think about the meanings of this. P, F, and only if Q. P or R, S and not Q. Okay, so we know two things right off the bat. We know S and not Q. So we know that not Q is going to be true. So if we have something like P if and only if Q, then what this means from these two inferences is that Q has the same value as P, but we have not Q being true, which means we know that not P is going to be true. But then we have the fact that we have P or R. Well, really, at this point we're done. We found that not P is true because we have not Q and we have P if and only if Q. So not P is done. We've shown that entailment. But we can take it a step further. We have P or R. P or R. Either P is true or R is true. But we know not P is true, which means P can't be true. So this two information also tells us that R is true. And we were given earlier here that S is true. So with these three pieces of information, we could almost immediately, right off the bat, figure out the following things are true. Not Q, not P, R, and S. Or specifically, we could say that Q is false, P is false, R is true, S is true. So those would be the values that we have based on what we were given. So when we do rules of inferences in the next few videos, as we return to them in predicate logic, modal logic, and so on, we want to work on developing some intuition and really understanding what these things mean. So that's why we're doing truth trees and truth tables first, and then we do actual proofs. So that way you can think about truth as we go through these things. Anyways, that's it for this video. As always, questions in the comments down below, and I'll get to you if I can.